cloud storage plays an important role nowadays. It provides a convenient way to collaborate with others and a great way to back up important data. Thankfully, we have a lot of options to choose from. Dropbox, Microsoft, Apple, Google, they all have their own solutions. But which one is better? And most importantly, how can we make cloud storage and network drives work well together? Let's find out. Before diving into the specifics, let's first discuss the criteria for a good cloud provider. First and foremost, it should allow a team of two or more people to easily collaborate with each other. The second and equally important feature is the ability to allow backups. The data's location should not matter, so it should be able to backup data coming from internal or external drives and, of course, network drives. Additionally, it should offer a generous amount of storage space, ideally a terabyte or more. And last but not least, it should allow the use of automated tools for both backing up and syncing data. We shouldn't have to manually move data around. And if it can do all that without being too expensive, that would be great. We don't need the service to be dirt cheap, but it shouldn't be ridiculously expensive either. Here are a few plans from some of the most commonly used providers. The good thing is that the majority of the cloud services meet our requirements, but their ready-made solutions like OneDrive and Dropbox have some limitations. For example, with the Dropbox plan for three people, it's not possible to give one user more space than the others, or combine the five terabytes for each person to one big 15 terabyte space. OneDrive is a little bit more flexible in that regard, but we need to purchase the bigger, more expensive plans. What we need is a more agnostic type of tool, like Backblaze's B2 plan, which has no limits on the number of people we can invite, no limits on file sizes, and it also allows us to set our own pricing. But let's forget about Backblaze for now, and let's say that we already have a plan with OneDrive, Dropbox, or Google Drive. There's this annoying issue that I'm sure a lot of you have faced before. Let's say we have a project in OneDrive and three people work on it. With Microsoft's pre-built software, we're kind of forced to work with two locations. The OneDrive location, where all the shared files live, and the actual project location on our network drive, where we ideally would want the project to be in. So we constantly have to move files around, which is not the most ideal way of doing things. Thankfully, we can use third-party software to improve this broken workflow. I'm using Synology's CloudSync, which needs Synology's OS, but I'm sure that QNAP has a similar tool. With CloudSync, we can grab specific OneDrive folders, or folders from any other cloud provider for that matter, and we can sync them to specific locations on our NAS. And because we can choose to sync data bidirectionally, we no longer have to deal with OneDrive at all. We can just work with our network storage like we're used to. If a teammate adds a file, it's automatically added to our drive. And the other way around, if we add a file locally, it gets added to OneDrive for everyone else to use. Once the project is done, we can just delete the task from CloudSync to avoid any further changes. We can have as many of these tasks as we want for each provider, and they can all point to different locations on our drive. This feature alone completely changes how we work with projects on the cloud. At least, that was the case for me. There are some tools similar to CloudSync for PC and Mac, but since I haven't tried them, I'm not going to make any recommendations. It's worth noting here that bidirectional syncing can be disastrous if one of our teammates accidentally deletes a file or folder, because it will delete the file on our drive too. To circumvent that issue, I always have a backup task running, so if something unforeseen happens, I can always revert back to the previous version. The backup schedule is handled by another Synology app called Hyper Backup. I have it set up to trigger at the end of the day, so if something bad happens, I've only lost a days of work. I could use more frequent backups, like an hourly schedule, but I feel it's a bit too much. All of the people I'm uh, working with are very experienced, so I don't think it's really needed. I know, famous last words. Either way though, changing the backup frequency is super easy, so if I have to, I can adjust it quickly. Okay, so we've covered how to work with cloud providers and network storage, but we still haven't discussed which cloud provider is the best. 
This one is a bit tricky and it really comes down to preference. Most of them have free plans, so if you're still undecided, you can try them all out. I personally use Backblaze's B2 plan. Backblaze is not only competitive price-wise, but it's also extremely flexible. It requires some initial setup to get things going, but it's nothing too extreme. Let me show you why I like it so much. Let's first cover pricing. With OneDrive and Dropbox, or a lot of the other providers, we are locked into a fixed monthly fee. With Backblaze, we only pay for what we use. And on top of that, we can control the bandwidth limits ourselves. So if we want to spend a maximum of 15 euros per month, we can easily set that up. If there are days or months that we're not using any bandwidth, we just won't have to pay anything, which is not the case with Dropbox or OneDrive. Let me show you how that looks. In our account, we have this caps and alerts section. There we can set daily limits for each task, downloads, uploads, or other types of transactions. My daily cap for all categories totals 75 cents per day. That equates to around $23 a month. If I only use half of the daily bandwidth, I'll pay half that. If I don't use any of it because it's the weekend or I'm on vacation, I won't pay anything. Keep in mind also that the caps I've set up for the B and C transactions are way too high for my needs. Usually I don't go over the 2,500 free transactions per day. But let me give you a better idea of costs. A terabyte of total storage and a terabyte of monthly downloads will set us back around $15 per month. So far I haven't reached that amount. My backblaze bills are generally low. What helps here is that each day there's some free bandwidth that can be used. 10 gigabytes of uploads and 1 gigabyte of downloads. As you can see with Backblaze it's very easy to pay a whole lot less than any of the other ready-made solutions. Now let me show you how I've set things up in Backblaze. The company uses the term buckets to basically describe a folder or a drive. I'm using two buckets currently, one that stores all the projects and another one that is for backups only. The whole management of these buckets happens on the NAS. Hyper Backup is taking care of backups and Cloud Sync is taking care of project syncing. Both of these applications come for free with a NAS, so there's no need to purchase anything extra. You can just download them from the package center and you're good to go. So with just a couple of applications, we can make cloud storage and network drives work really well together. There's one last piece we need to discuss and that has to do with asset management software, but we're going to do that in a separate video. It's a really big subject and I want to do it justice. I know that these videos are not going to be the most popular, but I think they are really needed, especially if you're trying to figure out how to improve your workflow. So, if you find them useful, make sure to spread the word. And I think that's about it for now. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.